Good afternoon and welcome to today's Coronavirus Daily Briefing. I want to start off by giving you a message and identifying myself. News reporter Dwayne Hart with NK Local News and Awareness UK3. My message is I thank you for your efforts to try and stay at home and save lives, but we are now slowly returning again and there is a chance we can have to go back into lockdown again due to the stupid decision to leave lockdown. I thank you greatly for your sacrifices. Coronavirus outbreak maps confirmed cases 5,242,727 today, plus 1,726 deaths, 341,040 today, plus 2 recovered, 2,112,198 today, plus 9,896. Coronavirus, what are the UK tra travel quarantine rules? The two week quarantine period for anyone arriving in the UK will be enforced from the 8th of June, the government says. The measures were being introduced to keep the transmission rate down and prevent a devastating second wave, Home Secretary Pretty Patel said on Friday. What are the new UK quarantine rules? Passengers arriving in the UK by plane, ferry or train, including UK nationals, will have to provide an address where they will remain for 14 days. There is a £100 penalty for anyone found who have not filled in this contact locator form. Surprise visits will be used to check they are following the rules. Those in England could be fined up to £1,000 if they fail to self-isolate, while governments in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland can also impose penalties. Passengers will be asked to drive in their own car to their destination where possible. If they don't provide an address, the government will arrange accommodation. They must then not go to work, school or public areas or use public transport or taxis. They should also not have any visitors unless they are providing essential support and should not go out to buy food or other essentials where they can rely on others. What, why are the new measures being introduced in June? While there was still significant transmission of the virus within the UK, the impact of those border restrictions would have been negligible, the government says, but now transmission has fallen. It hopes quarantine measures will lower the risk of infection being reintroduced from other countries. This, this, the measures will be reviewed every three weeks to check they are in line with scientific guidance and remain effective and necessary. Do the quarantine rules apply to everybody? There are a number of groups who are exempt, including road haulage and freight workers, medical officials who are travelling to help fight coronavirus, anyone arriving from the Republic of Ireland, the Channel Islands or the Isle of Man. Seasonal agricultural workers, if they self-isolate on the property where they are working. Initially, it was suggested the rules would have also not applied to travellers from France. However, the government later insisted the quarantine measures will also apply to them. Seasonal agricultural workers are exempt if they self-isolate where they are working. The possibility of introducing air bridges is being considered by the government. This will be an arrangement where travellers from countries with low coronavirus levels will be exempt from quarantine. Speaking to the BBC, Greece's tourism minister called for his country, which has not been badly affected to be among them. Do other countries have quarantine rules? People travelling to another country may also have to enter quarantine when they arrive there. 14 day quarantine rules apply in destinations including Spain, Italy, Greece, Canada, the UAE, Australia and New Zealand. Many have introduced screening measures such as temperature checks and entry restrictions. Some have banned foreign visitors, as in Spain, where only UK citizens with permanent residence status can enter. Arrivals in Italy must carry a form explaining their reason to travel, avoid public transport and report to health authorities. France has now announced quarantine plans for UK arrivals. The US only has 13 airports open for international flights. Canadian rules insist airlines must carry out health assessments on passengers. The United Arab Emirates has strict entry rules for foreign residents. UK citizens need a special exemption visa to travel to Australia. The New Zealand border is close to almost all arrivals. Many airports have taken measures to help enforce social distancing rules. What has the response been? UK airlines fear the measures will have a devastating impact on their industry and the wider economy. Michael O'Leary, Chief Executive of Ryanair, as he said the policy had no credibility and Airlines UK 
which represents various airlines their quarantine would effectively keel off air travel. The British Pods Association, which represents ferry companies, has also spoken out against the measures calling them overzealous. Coronavirus. Can I get a holiday refund? Travel insurance advice from the Associ Association of British Insurers. What other measures have been put in place? The government guidance says all flight passengers should remain at least two metres, six feet apart from other people wherever possible and consider wearing a face covering. People travelling through Manchester, Stansted and East Midlands airports have already been told to cover their faces and wear gloves. Passengers need to keep at least two metres, six feet apart. Some temperature screening trials will also be conducted at Stansted, Heathrow, one of the world's busiest airports is already trialling large-scale temperature checks. Air France says passengers will be temperature checked before flying. The carrier has also made face masks compulsory, similar to several US airlines. Will airlines still be flying? EasyJet will restart a small number of flights on the 15th of June, with all passengers and cabin crew told to wear face masks. Ryanair still plans to reintroduce 40% of its flights from the 1st of July, subject to travel restrictions being lifted and safety measures being brought in at airports. British Airways is reviewing its plans to run 50% of its schedule from July because of the new quarantine rules. Coronavirus is a potentially fatal type of virus associated with the common cold, pneumonia and severe acute respiratory system, SARS. A deadly outbreak of a new strand named 2019, novel COVID-19, which can be transmitted between humans, was discovered in Wuhan, China in December 2019. Here's all the latest news and updates on the coronavirus at MK Local News and Awareness UK3. Boris Johnson using army to enforce London coronavirus lockdown, according to reports. The government had plans to use the military to enforce lockdown in London when social distancing measures were introduced, according to new reports. Piers Morgan bans all cabinet members who backed Dominic Cummins from his ITV show. MPs return to business as usual as Parliament declared safe to reopen amid Covid fears. Confusion mounts as police start patrolling non-essential aisles in supermarkets as Britons continue adapting to life on lockdown. There has been confusion, confusion surrounding what is and what is not allowed to be purchased in the supermarket. On the 23rd of March, Boris Johnson imposed a national lockdown, which means that people are only allowed out of their homes for a limited number of reasons, such as exercise and shopping for medical supplies and food. But in recent weeks, confusion has mounted over what is and what is not allowed to be purchased on such excursions, especially as the lockdown measures begin to ease. Here's what you need to know about what supermarkets are allowed to sell during lockdown. Cambridgeshire police were criticised for appearing to police which items people were, were buying on their supermarket trips, urging them to avoid aisles selling non-essential items. After conducting a patrol of a Tesco in Barhill, northwest of Cambridge, the police force tweet, tweeted, good to see everyone was abiding by social distancing measures and the non-essential aisles were empty. But it prompted a backlash as people criticised the police for trying to determine what was and what was not an essential item for them. The police soon deleted the tweet and issued a statement saying over ex urban officer was responsible. Meanwhile in Northamptonshire the police said they could start searching shopping trolleys to ensure people are only buying essential items. What can supermarkets actually sell? The government has since confirmed that shops that have been permitted to stay open during lockdown can sell whatever they like provided it is legal obviously. Earlier this month, the Prime, Minister, uh, Prime Minister's official spokesperson said, we've set out a list of shops which could remain open, and if the shops are on the list, then they are free to sell whatever they have in stock, obviously provided it's legal to do so. Can I still buy non-essential items? If you are going to a shop that has been legally permitted to remain in lockdown, the government guidelines state you can buy whatever you want in that shop at the time, whether it's food or hygiene products, test and trace system to launch this week after 25,000 trackers recruited. Brazil 
is the first and third worst hit country, but its regions could ease lockdown new claims against Cummins forced down the street to change tactics. New claims against Cummins forced down the down street to change tactics. Coronavirus immunity could last six, just six months, <clears throat> Sandy finds Piers, Piers Morgan's lockdown behaviour irresponsible and disgusting, Lord Sugar says. Agreed. Stay alert. We can all help control the virus if we all stay alert. This means you must stay at home as much as possible. Work from home if you can. Limit contact with other people. Keep your distance if you go out. Keep two metres apart where possible. Wash your hands regularly. Do not leave your home if you or anyone in your household have sy symptoms. If someone you, in your house you live with has symptoms of coronavirus, you must stay at home. If someone you live with has the symptoms of coronavirus COVID-19, this is sometimes known as self-isolating as a family. If you can work from home, you should work from home, including school. If you can, speak to your employer about working from home. If you're not eligible for statutory sick pay, you can apply online for universal credit. If you cannot get statutory sick pay, visit gov.uk, www.gov.uk. I'll repeat, www.gov.uk. <clears throat> Everyone in the UK <clears throat> with symptoms <clears throat> now eligible for coronavirus tests. Coronavirus online child abuse warning during lockdown. Children are more likely to be using the internet unsupervised with schools shut. Online child abusers and predators are seeking to take advantage of the coronavirus pandemic. International Law Enforcement Agency Europol has warned. Europol has said it has said it, it had information that strongly indicates increased online activity by those seeking child abuse material. With schools closed and many working from home, children are more likely to be using the internet unsupervised. The agency also said cyber criminals are taking advantage of the crisis. In online forums and boards, child abusers are welcoming opportunities to engage with children, Europol said. It warned that abusers expect children to be more vulnerable due to isolation, less supervision and greater online exposure. A spokesperson said the agency could not Spokeswoman said the agency could not share which national law enforcement agencies had raised concerns, but described the increase in activity as a worrying trend, supervision needed. There are lots of kids at home off school and they're online whilst their parents are busy working, said Professor Alan Woodward, a cyber security expert at the University of Surrey. Understand the risk. It's the very, it's the very time that these people take advantage of your attention being somewhere else. The NSPCC said technology companies also had a vital job to do in protecting children from abusers on their platforms and report suspicious activity to police, but obviously they won't. Worryingly, abusers will see <clears throat> this national health emergency as an opportunity to target children who are spending more time online and may be feeling increasingly lonely or anxious because of the lockdown, said Andy Burroughs. NSPCC Head of Child Safety Online. It all sickening. At home, it is now more important than ever for children, parents and carers to be having regular conversations with their children about what they're doing online and that they know what <coughs> they can come to you with any worries you may have or they may have. So always go soft on your kids if you want them to trust you because it's more important than ever you, they trust you because if something's wrong they might not trust you if you're harsh on them so be soft phishing emails for nspcc's net aware website contain, contains information for parents about different social networks and websites and how to say stay say stay safe online it has recently added articles about video chat and live streaming services and the new popular netflix party extension europol's report also warned of the high level of other cybercrime, including phishing emails that pretend to contain information about the virus and links and attachments which aim to profit from the global health concern. <clears throat> Many of the scams being employed are classic cyber attacks with a new coronavirus angle in the way they are presented. 
the psychology they're using is the same, but some of the classic human responses are heightened at the moment, Professor Woodward has said. Fear, doubt and uncertainty is a classic one to play on. Do not leave home if you or someone you live with has any of the following. A high temperature, a new continuous cough, persistent vomiting or diarrhoea, and a loss of smell. A loss of or change to your sense of smell or taste. There are currently no drugs licensed for the treatment of prevention of COVID-19. While several drug trials are ongoing, there is currently no proof that hydroxychloroquine or any other drug can cure or prevent COVID-19. The misuse of hydroxychloroquine can cause serious side effects and illness and even lead to death. WHO, World Health Organization, is coordinating efforts to develop <coughs> and evaluate medicines <coughs> to treat COVID-19. Hot peppers in your food, though very tasty, cannot prevent or cure COVID-19. Obviously not. The best way to protect yourself against the new coronavirus is to keep at least one metre away from others and to wash your hands frequently and thoroughly. It is also beneficial for your general health to maintain a balanced diet, stay well hydrated, exercise regularly and sleep well. Drinking alcohol does not protect you against COVID-19 and can be dangerous. <clears throat> Frequent or excessive alcohol consumption can increase your risk of health problems. Cold weather and snow cannot cure the new coronavirus, obviously. Are, are antibiotics effective in pre preventing the new coronavirus? No. <clears throat> antibiotics do not work against viruses, only bacteria. The new coronavirus 2019 novel COVID-19 is a new virus and therefore antibiotics should not be used as a means of prevention or treatment. However, if you are hospitalised for that 2019 novel COVID, you may receive antibiotics. You you may receive antibiotics because bacterial co-infection is possible. Are there any specific medicines to prevent or treat the new coronavirus? To date, there is no specific medicine recommended for the prevent to prevent or to treat the new coronavirus. 2019 novel COVID. However, those infected with the virus should receive appropriate care to relieve and treat symptoms and those with severe illness should those with severe illness should virus should receive appropriate care to relieve and treat symptoms and those with severe illness should receive optimised supportive care. <clears throat> Some specific treatments are under investigation and will be tested through clinical trials. WHO is helping to accelerate research and development efforts with a range of partners. Residential children's homes, special schools and colleges, other residential FE provision and mainstream boarding schools are usually considered households for the purpose of the household self-isolation policy, which means the settings should self-isolate if a resident develops a high temperature or a new continuous cough, or has a loss of or change in their normal sense of taste or smell, anosmia. These households, <clears throat> in contrast with other households, will almost always need to have staff and other professionals arriving and leaving during a period of self-isolation. Careful infection control measures should be followed during and other after visits, as any health, as any self-isolating household would do if they had unavoidable visitors. If a pupil or student showing symptoms, a high temperature or a new continuous cough or has a loss of or change in their normal sense or of taste or smell as anosmia, requires staff contact for personal care, please refer to the guidance on infection control procedures. To find out more about cleaning areas where a pupil or student showing symptoms has been resident, please read the guidance on cleaning and disposal of waste at www.gov.uk. These infection control measures would apply to staff in the home, school or college. Social workers, <coughs> police investigated child protection, clinicians providing health care, any visiting professionals, any other necessary visitors, <coughs> 
the approach to self-isolation will depend on the physical layout of a residential educational setting <clears throat> and staffing arrangements. It is important to decide whether the whole setting should be treated as a single household or as multiple households. For example, where residential provision is spread across several separate buildings, you may wish to treat these as different households. Staff ratios must be as maintained as a safe level to protect children and young people. Children's homes and special schools and colleges should assess staffing levels on a daily basis and liaise with families, local authorities and commissioners where there is a risk of staffing shortages, special schools and special colleges. <clears throat> All residential special schools and colleges jointly with the local authorities and taking into account parents' views should access the risk both for the individual institution and for the individual pupil or student in deciding how to apply this guidance most effectively. This is likely to include working with the local Public Health England, PHE, Health Protection Team and the local clinical commissioning group, CCG. It is important to maintain staff ratios, <clears throat> particularly for those pupils or students whose needs mean they are safer in remaining in the setting and returning home. If necessary, the setting should work with the local authority to draft in staff from other settings rather than close. This could include deploying with staff from mainstream schools and colleges or other special schools and colleges that are not remaining open. Staffing should be prioritised towards the most vulnerable pupils and students, particularly those in residential provision. Where settings cannot remain open safe, safely, they should aim to make closures temporary and reopen once they have drafted in additional staff. Local authorities must help with these. Staff movements and should, as far as possible, disregard the usual boundaries of maintained academy, college or other institution type to move appropriate staff into priority settings. Students should adhere to social distancing wherever they are living. For term time residential pupils and students, social distancing should happen at their residential educational settings during term time. <clears throat> and this family home during the holiday period, moving between these locations, is allowed if pupils with and students have returned home, for example, over a holiday period and they come into contact with someone with symptoms of coronavirus, COVID-19. Disgusting. Or display symptoms themselves. Then they must not return to the residential educational setting and must self-isolate at home in line with the PHE guidance. Self-isolation. Managers of residential settings should speak to parents and carers to establish views on whether the child or young person or teenager or adolescent should return home, teenager or adolescent, the same thing, or return home for any period of self-isolation due to them or someone else in the same setting, displaying symptoms or should remain at their setting. They should do this with pre, should also, in pre risk assessment, should also include consideration of the impact on the pupil or student from the disruption of their usual staff relationship and routines. Autism cannot be forgotten during this coronavirus pandemic. Autism must not be forgotten because autism affects us all differently if we have it as a spectrum. And if we leave autism, it can make people feel really depressed not knowing what's going on, not understand, and struggle to cope with change. So we need to give autistic people the best of help we can. Cases in the United States, 1 million confirmed, 613,680 deaths, 96,535 recovered, 361,239. United Kingdom confirmed, 257,154 deaths, 36,675 recovered, not stated. That is not good. I just don't want to state it because I want to panic you. Thank you for watching today's daily briefing. Neutral Porter Dwayne Hart's MK Log News and Awareness UK3. I bring this briefing to an end. Goodbye.